They're in the gate. And they're off. Six feet is very quick out of the gate. Takes control at once. Here's Bilburn, Joe Jonick coming through along the inside to take second. Then it's Orth third, one from the outside. Chief Counsel is three lengths off the lead. Johnny Paycheck is racing in between horses on hold at this stage. Carol's Comic is the gray and another four back to Summer Fireball. They've passed a half mile pole. And it's Bill Byrne, Joe Jonick leading the way by a three quarters of a length to six feet in second. At the rail, Johnny Paycheck inches forward. He's just inside of Orth. Outside of them, Chief Counsel fit, three lengths off the lead. Carol's Comic and Summer Fireball a little bit closer. They're a quarter of a mile from home. Bill Byrne, Joe Jonick at the rail trying to fight on six feet alongside with the white blinkers to take the lead. Orth has dead aim if good enough. Then Johnny Paycheck and Carol's Comic. They're inside the final eighth of a mile. Orth with a three wide bid trying to get to the top pair in the final stages. Orth has good momentum and Orth runs him down. Six feet was second. Bill Byrne, Joe Jonick third. Photo, Johnny Paycheck and Carol's Comic. Clem Labine to the outside. And they're off. Holding the loot is quick. It's my house has speed now and up to take the lead. Then it's red flag racing between rivals in third. At the rail, Tigre de Sluggo and Clem Labine is at the back of a compact group. It's my house comes to the 5 8 pole. Leading over stablemate, holding the loot. Then Tigre de Sluggo at the rail. Next to him is Red Flag. Three quarters to Clem Labine. Four lengths covers them. Half mile to travel. It's my house. A clear cut pace advantage. Leads at a length and a half now. Holding the loot second. Red Flag, Tigre de Sluggo, and Clem Labine. They're coming to the three eighth pole with It's My House and holding the loot. One, two. Red flag in the thick of it, just a length back third. Tigre de Sluggo losing a touch of ground. And outside of him, Clem Labine. Holding the loot, takes the lead while in hand at the quarter pole. Red flag moves to engage. It's my house is under pressure at the rail. There's an eighth of a mile to run. And holding the loot opens up two on red flag. Center of the track, Clem Labine, a 16th to go. And holding the loot opens up with authority. Holding the loot is clearly best, handwritten to a four-length victory. Clem Labine nails red flag for the exacta, then Tigre de Sluggo. The key is unity, completes the lineup. And they're off. 34 Coop is out quickly. Belmont Bill on the outside. Big Flint in between horses now third. Peace Tour taken back fourth, five lengths off the leader who is sprinting along on the front end. The key is unity, already about 10 off the pace and a 10 Zioni at the back of the pack. Belmont Bill, aggressive to say the least has opened up eight lengths in the early stages. 34 Coop gets a nice target in second. He's followed by Big Flint and Peace Tour right together. A gap of six to the key is Unity and a Tenzioni. They swing onto the back stretch and Belmont Bill still with the big lead. 34 Coop biding his time in second. Big Flint pushed along from third. 
Atenzione is moving up on the outside of Peace Tour, and that leaves the key is Unity at the back, but now starting to inch up at the rail. They're moving into the far turn. Belmont Bill, five length lead. 34 coupes, second still. Big Flint, two behind him. Another four to the key is Unity. Approaching the quarter pole, and Belmont Bill's lead is diminishing. It's down to two. 34 coupe. Here's Big Flint on the outside with his run, and then the key is Unity. Top of the stretch, Belmont Bill digging in on the outside, Big Flint. Trying to move into second and doing just that. Then 34 Koopa, 16th to go. And Big Flint coming after Belmont Bill. Belmont Bill trying to fend off Big Flint, but Big Flint's got him. And Big Flint wins it by a length. Belmont Bill second. The key is unity. Out bombs 34 Coop for the show dough. They're in the gate, and they're off. Clean start. Eddie's new dream gets the first call. Here's Doris May up to take the lead, and Alice Marble along the inside. Chancery Way now moves up to engage Doris May, taming the Tigress at the back of the field. It's Doris May and Chancery Way dueling to the half-mile pole. They've pulled two clear of Eddie's new dream. Alice Marble on the fence, taming the Tigress three wide, two and a half covers them into the far turn. It's Doris May maintaining a narrow lead. Chancery Way, here's Eddie's new dream making her move in between right now. And then a four wide taming the Tigress. The favorite Alice Marble is at the back. She's got run, just needs to pick a spot. At this stage, there are four across the track and Alice Marble just waiting. A quarter of a mile to go. Taming the Tigress and Eddie's new dream. Go on with it. Doris May at the rail. Alice Marble crying out, begging for a spot, trying to find it. One from the outside, and she just did. There's an eighth of a mile to go. And here comes Alice Marble. Alice Marble, a gem of consistency. And she will win the spring fever as much the best. Taming the Tigress second. Eddie's new dream was third. They're in the gate, and they're off. Palio's Princess is very quick and establishes the lead. Super Renee in the red colors immediately moves to tackle, and two bossy broke well, and now comes up to their outside. Gypsy Lynn keeping pace with the early group. In fact, she is the fastest as they get to the main course. It's Gypsy Lynn in front, two bossy second, Super Renee now third. Then Palio's Princess, she's got away at the rail. Aventap in mid-pack, five lengths off the lead. Followed by Caterini, inside Good Buju. The two trailers, Albayadir and Peppermint Flirt, is at the back. Less than three-eighths of a mile to go, and it's Gypsy Lynn, pressed by two bossy. They're head and head for the lead. Super Renee, Palio's Princess to their outside. They're joined widest of all by Aventap, who gets into things. Only two lengths off the leader from the back of the field. Albayadir is trying to run on late with the white cap. They're at the top of the stretch. Many chances. Gypsy Lynn confronted by Aventap. And Albayadir bearing down. Palio's Princess gets room at the rail. Coming to the 16th pole. Palio's Princess, Albayadir. Albayadir has the lead in the final stages. She's got away a late surge. Albayadir and Umberto Rispoli run them down. She's got away with second. Palio's Princess third. Photo between Aventap and Caterini for fourth. And they're off. 
Papale and Settecento are out quickly. Mr. T's thirsty. Warren's Candyman rushing up. And that means Nolo Contesto goes about five wide into the first turn. It's Settecento and Papale head and head. Warren's Candyman three wide, a length back third. Then sitting on go and Nolo Contesto right together. Mr. T's thirsty and prayer of Jabez. They have six furlongs to run. And it's Papale and Settecento sharing the lead. Warren's Candyman a length back third. They're followed by Sitting on Go at the rail. And outside of him, Nolo Contesto caught four wide with five furlongs to run. Mr. T's Thirsty has settled nicely behind this group. And another five back to prayer of Jabez. Half mile to go in the race named for L.A. Fire Captain Steve McCann's memorial. And it is Papale and Warren's Candyman Warren's Candyman on the outside puts his head in front. Three furlongs from home. Set to Cento under pressure. Nolo Contesto just a half length off them. Sitting on go. Mr. T's thirsty in the lime colors. Just three lengths off the lead. He'll have to go very wide. And it's five back to prayer of Jabez. Nolo Contesto dueling with Warren's Candyman at the quarter pole. Warren's Candyman between horses, Nolo Contesto, and now Mr. T's Thirsty starts his rally in the center of the track, sitting on go, mired in traffic, coming to the 16th pole, sitting on go, gets out in between rivals on the outside, Mr. T's Thirsty, but it is sitting on go who erupts late to win it going away. Nolo Contesto, Mr. T's Thirsty, Warren's Candyman, and Settecento. In the seventh, scratch number seven, Ted, 23 minutes to post. They're in the gate. And... They're off. Quick start for Westward Look. Westward Fully Westward loaded is up and on the pace, too. In, in between them, finally them here. Finally New Park here. on the New outside, Park and the outside red colors the red is now vying for the lead. So it's New Park so it's New and Westward and Look. Westward Those two go on with it. A length and a half to fully loaded. Outside finally here. Then a gap of four. Back to Rebel Posse. Haribu is down at the rail. Red line settles about eight lengths off the speed. Another couple back to Safa's day. And Octopus is at the back of the field. They move toward the far turn. And it's New Park who has cleared off on the rail now in front by two to fully loaded in second. Between horses finally here. Westward look is down at the rail. Then comes Rebel Posse racing in between horses. Haribu is to their outside. Two more lengths to Red Line and Safa's Day, followed by Octopus. They pass the quarter pole and turn for home with New Park to catch. Hugs the rail and leads a length to finally here, closing between rivals. Westward looks at a good trip. And in the center, here's Rebel Posse. Rebel Posse and Westward Look are the two that go on with it. In between horses, fighting on is finally here. And from the back of the field, Red Line takes off late. Rebel Posse or Red Line? Rebel Posse held on. Red Line, a hard charging second. Photo finally here in Westward Look. Safa's day was fifth. They're in the gate. They're in the gate. They're in the gate. And they're off. They're off. They're off. Quick start for Westward Look. Fully loaded is up and on the pace, too. In between them, finally here. New Park on the outside, and the red colors is now vying for the lead. So it's New Park and Westward Look. Those two go on with it. A length and a half to fully loaded. Outside, finally here. Then a gap of four. Back to Rebel Posse. Haribu is down at the rail. 
red line red settles line, about eight settles lengths about off, eight off the speed. Off the speed. Another couple Another back to Safa's day, and day. Octopus is Octopus at the back of the field. The field. They, move they move toward the far turn, and it's New Park who has cleared off on the rail now in front by two to fully loaded in second. Between horses finally here, westward look is down at the rail. Then comes Rebel Posse racing in between horses. Haribu is to their outside. Two more lengths to Red Line and Safa's day. Followed by Octopus, they pass the quarter pole and turn for home with New Park to catch. Hugs the rail and leads a length to finally here, closing between rivals. Westward looks had a good trip, and in the center here's Rebel Posse. Rebel Posse and Westward Look are the two that go on with it. In between horses, fighting on is finally here, and from the back of the field, Red Light takes off late. Rebel Posse or Red Line? Rebel Posse held on. Red line, a hard charging second. Photo finally here in Westward Look. Safa's day was fifth. Two more. Two more. Fast and shiny, Fast and, and shiny good, and is good is gone. Good is gone. They're in the gate. They're in the gate. They're in the gate. They're in the gate. And they're off. They're off. They're off. Fast and shiny and good as gone, both out alertly. Procrastination matching strides with them at the rail. Less touch taken to the outside quickly. And that leaves classy Mademoiselle at the back of the field. It's fast and shiny, heading to the half mile pole just in front. Procrastination inches closer ahead back second. A length back to Bless Touch in third. And good is gone on the outside of her fourth. These four separated by just two lengths. A gap of five to a hard ridden classy. Mademoiselle. Three furlongs to run, fast and shiny. A half length now to procrastination in second. Good is gone on the outside and blessed touch in the red colors. The first to bow out is procrastination at the quarter pole. Fast and shiny, the leader on the outside. Good as gone. They're followed between rivals by Bless Touch and at the rail, it's procrastination. There's an eighth of a mile to go. And Good is gone and Fast and Shiny are the two to battle it out. Good is gone on the outside. Fast and Shiny won't surrender at the rail. They're nose and nose coming for the wire. Good is gone, Fast and Shiny. Fast and Shiny gonna get it. Fast and Shiny turns away, Good is gone. Bless Touch was third, procrastination for it. In the ninth, number nine, Dane Hill Song races with Lasix for the first time. First time. First time. We're set. We're set. We're set. And they're off. They're off. Morea time comes out very quickly. Song of Shadows and Dane Hill Song flashing plenty of early gas. Those two are now one two as they cross the dirt. It's Song of Shadows by a head. Dane Hill Song. Now Dane Hill Song up to take the lead. Square and Rare moves into third. Maria Time on the inside and one Mo Eddie between those two. Proof She Zips in hand about seven lengths off the lead. Another couple back to Blondzilla with less than a half mile to travel. Then comes Isabel Ludlow. A big gap to the next flight. Betty is the code. Followed by Classy Candy. And Freya's cats at the back of a very strung out field. It's Song of Shadows, three quarters of a length. Dane Hill's song pressing second. Proof she zips on the move with the red blinkers in between horses. Maria time is down at the rail. Blondzilla with a wide bid outside square and rare. Isabel Ludlow comes through down on the fence with five to make up. There's an eighth of a mile to go. And Proof she zips is coming smartly to battle with Maria time. Proof she zips takes the lead with a 16th to go. Maria time fights on. Isabel Ludlow closing late. Proof. She zips. Ellen Jackson meant business, shipping south and getting the money. Photo for second, Maria time, and a hard-charging Isabel Ludlow with a good debut. Behind them, it was Blondzilla, and fifth was a battle that did involve Betsy as the code.
It's another Chamber of Commerce Day here in Southern California. Hi, everybody. Happy President's Day. It sure doesn't feel like a Monday, does it? We've got a special 10 race card. More importantly, we've got a special handicapping guest. His accomplishments the last week will blow your mind, much less over the last couple of years. He's one of the most talented tournament players anywhere in the country. I refer to him as El Heffy. He's the boss. His name, Dylan Donnelly. Dylan, happy Monday. Welcome to the seminar. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, let's rewind the history books a little bit. Uh, last Saturday, you were not here at the Great Race Place. You were at Tampa Bay Downs playing in a tournament, two-day tournament, Friday, Saturday. You won your entry on a qualifier by putting up a whopping $80 at horsetourneys.com. So you decided to hop in a plane and fly to Tampa, Florida and spend a couple days down there in Central Florida. What happened? Uh, I took it down. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's why you're El Jefe. Yeah, that was a, it was a good weekend. Well, let's take a look at you celebrating afterwards. We've got a couple of pictures. That's you on the left with the big trophy. And, of course, on the right is the final leaderboard. I mentioned you bought in for $80. You wound up with a final bankroll of 2385 That was yours to keep. But what additional prize money did you win on top of that? Uh, so I actually got uh, – so I kind of cleared for like uh, – Almost 22000 That Is that weekend. after the government got their cut? or No, not yet. Okay. Not so, yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll handle that later. So you turned $80 into twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars dollars $23,000 roughly. Yes. That paid yeah. for your airfare. That paid for your hotel, I'm sure. Yeah, it did. Um, it was a good weekend. Bought dinner for everybody. And, uh, yeah. But the fun part wasn't over because you flew back to the home base of Southern California. And this past Saturday, just 48 hours ago, you decided to play in our $500 tournament. Now, did you actually put in the full 500 or did you win a qualifier somewhere no, else? That I did spend, uh, I splurged and spent the 500 bucks. <laughs> well, you had plenty of money in your yeah. pocket. So you entered our $500 live money tournament. And lo and behold, we've got another picture of Dylan, this time with a check bigger than most of our cars. It's hard to see the writing on the actual picture itself, but that was after the dust settled. Again, you won. What amount was on that check? Uh, so that was. Uh, Twelve eight nine eight, I think. So close to thirteen yep, thousand. Yep, close to thirteen thousand, and then I got a uh, thirty five hundred dollar UBC <laughs> seat for in two weeks. So basically, yeah. thirty six thousand dollars in, in a seven day period is what you won in two tournaments. I'll take it. Yes. What's your secret? Uh, none really. Just um, you know, just do a lot of homework, and uh, once you kind of you know think that everything's going well, you kind of might want to take a step back and just kind of coast, but you can't. Because the reason why you're having so much success is because you're spending hours and uh, forming bets and, and handicapping. It's the work behind the scenes that really matters, right? Like, in other words, when we watch an NBA game, those guys are practicing basically six, seven hours a day before we see before we see them actually playing a game. It's the same with you. We see you at the tournament basically firing away, but you've done so much homework ahead of time. You kind of have a roadmap of what you're going to do. Yeah, no, I mean, it's six days a week I'm pretty much – looking at uh looking at the cards for friday saturday sunday and you know i take my time leisurely time it takes me you know six days to go through all you know all three of the cards and uh it's not just handicapping you have to form your bets it's really like 50 50 because you can handicap but then when you get up to the window and you make the bets it's you can just mess it all up and i've heard that many times i'm a good handicapper but a horrible better what's your secret in terms of formulating the bets to achieve the maximum profit uh, you know, you just like in these tournaments, you just have you can only bet you can't bet every race. Um, even daily betting, you can't bet every race. You have to pick your spots and just let it ride. Um, like I bet, I bet one bet for Saturday in that tournament. I bet the early double, my three hundred bucks, and if it was going to hit, it was going to hit. It's called discipline. That's for sure. You didn't like the Bob Baffert heavy favorite in the second race, which was the start cool. of the early double. That was the secret to your wager. You found a vulnerable favorite and you tried to capitalize on it. Yeah, that was. My old horse, Can't Beat the Rock, came out of that race, and all those numbers were inflated in there. All those horses, the horse who ran second came back to run up the track. The horse who ran fourth came back to run up the track, and this Baffert horse was breaking from the outside. And I was, there is no way that this horse, he opened up at one to nine, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I uh, can guarantee you we are not going to run up the track today when we have Dylan Donnelly as our seminar guest. It's our pleasure to have him today. He's going to analyze the entire 10 race card here at the Great Race Place. But before he does any of that, and of course, he's rooting for a horse he owns in race number three as well. Before we talk about any of that, let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Miramati and get the early changes on a special President's Day card here at the Great Race Place.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, the turf is firm, the rail on the turf at zero feet. Here are the changes. No changes in the first race. Start of the 50 cent early pick five. Blinker note in race two. We have a blinker note in the third. In the fourth, scratch number two, Phineas. And with that scratch, there's no show wagering. Fourth race, scratch number two, Phineas. The fifth race, no changes. Jackpot in the rainbow six, $164,000. No changes in the sixth, beginning of the late pick five. No changes in race seven. Blinker note in race eight. The ninth race starts the golden hour pick four with no changes. And in the 10th, revised morning line, scratch one, double fantasy, and scratch number five, blushing. One and five are out. Golden hour double starts, revised morning line posted. Enjoy your day at Santa Anita Park. Let's go back to Quigley's Corner. Tom's guest today is Dylan Donnelly. Welcome back. We're talking horses with accomplished uh, tournament player Dylan Donnelly. He's won $36,000 in the last nine days. He put up a whopping $580 in order to achieve that. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. Dylan, we talked a lot about structuring your wagers uh, properly as well, besides the importance of handicapping. But another question I want to ask you is, like, let, let's look at today's card. When I look at today's card, and I have, haven't accomplished as much as you have, I always try and assess the degree of difficulty. Because the more difficult the card, the more likely there will be that there will be some prices along the way. You've looked at today's card extensively. From a scale of 1 to 10, how difficult would you assess today's card? I mean, so like when you say difficult, it would just mean how well do I like the card. Um, I mean, I do like the card uh, today. You know, there are some three to fives, two to five morning line favorites that I think are actually pretty vulnerable. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a swing here in the pick five. I used to play more, but um, I'm going to take a swing at it. What is it about tournament play that you like maybe more than live money play? I know you do both, but obviously you've achieved a lot in tournament play. What is it about it? Basically low takeout, mm -hmm. smaller circle of uh, competitors. What is it that kind of uh, floats your boat when it comes to tournaments? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's me versus you. It's not me versus the track really. Um, or the world. Yeah, and if I study more and I know more game theory and um, you know, and I have the the stones to kind of make <laughs> some of the bets, and a lot of these people don't, you know, there's only a handful, small percent of the people that can consistently kind of, you know, win these things just because of their game theory and willing to to risk it. And I'm not, I'm trying to, you know, being humble, but it's like it's it's true. You have to be willing to lose. And uh, some people just get kind of scared and don't fire. And those of us savvy in the tournament world, we do see a consistent uh, names up on the top of the leaderboard. Generally, there's a surprise. But, you know, when you look at the field in totality, you can kind of identify who the five or ten biggest competitors to you might be. Oh, definitely. I'll go down. I'll look in the leaderboard. I'm like, oh, he's in it. Oh, he's in it. Tony <laughs> Joe's in it. Mustari's in it. Uh so, you know, and there's some talented women as well. Let's not be gender specific, right? Of course, there's a lot of talented uh, female horse players out there as well. Yeah, of course. No, they're up there. Um, Alexa Zepp and yeah. Christy Moore. Or way back, Judy Wagner and yeah, uh, Sally. 
definitely in, in Las Vegas. All right, enough chit chatting about the tournaments. We got we got to try and win some money today. I'm not. I don't know if we're going to win thirty six thousand dollars, but we're going to do our best to get uh, to get as many winners your way as we possibly can. So let's take a look, Dylan, at race number one, which begins the fifty cent early pick five. We are on the turf course, and of course, as you see, as you saw in the graphic shot, we are fast and firm here in Arcadia, California. It's a starter allowance race. The rails are at zero feet. We've got a field of six. The morning line favorite originally was number four. Our shining light at six to five, but the current betting choice at four to five is number two oncoming oncoming beat your horse last time do you expect him to repeat today um you know when you look at this race uh no i don't expect him to repeat um i think the odds will shift here the four should will probably be four to five i'm guessing the, <laughs> realistically this horse could be five lengths clear under the wire the first time there is no other horses that are going to be anywhere close to him if I was Frankie Dottori and he, I'd say he's you know a little bit better of a jockey than me. Um, I would open up five and try to keep maintain my distance instead of trying to back the pace up because when you're on a speed horse and you try to slow it down, you're inviting the closers into it. And I think there's better closers than him. I think the five horse is the best closer in the race, but I mean he could be ten lengths back the whole way around. And I I, I, I picked him on top. Um, because I do think that um, – because the four doesn't have to get this – he doesn't have to get a mile in the eighth. So if he does back it down and the five is within three lengths of him, I think the five can outkick him You know, the last two furlongs. Dylan, before you step up to the window and make a wager, how important are either jockeys or trainers? Let's focus first on jockeys. Frankie DeTore, are there certain jockeys you want either embrace or maybe a discard, or are they just kind of just immaterial to your overall handicapping process? You know, I really didn't used to care. I mean, you know, you care who's riding them, but I've been paying a lot more attention recently. Um, just, you know, what they're more inclined to do to a certain horse. Their tendencies? Um, yeah, their tendencies and um, where they are, their post position wise. And I've been paying attention a lot more recently to that. Um, so, I mean, Detori's pretty damn good. I think he's... Uh, you know, one of the top guys out here right now. And how important is pace handicapping to you? In other words, do you try and visualize the race on paper, how it's going to develop out on the racetrack, or is that a secondary consideration for you? Uh, that's mostly everything to me, to be honest. Um, pace is pace is huge. Um, if you get in front of a horse, like you and I can race, but if I, I mean, well, you've got a, an unfair advantage. You got a wheelchair. I mean, yeah, you know, but if we're going and if there's a, a mile race and I'm, you know, 100 yards from the wire you might be faster than me but i'm i'm going to be closer so um you know everyone can get it every horse can get a distance just how fast and if you're in front of them um it's just it's so much easier let's turn the page take a look at uh, race number two which begins the 50 cent early pick four we've got a field of six and here's a heavy morning line favorite number uh, two sonoran is three to five on john white's morning line is this one of the vulnerable favorites you were talking about dylan yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Baffert's horses are usually firing right away, and this horse got slower in the second start. So he's, I mean, on buyers and, and sheets, he's he's going backwards. Um, he doesn't look like the smoothest mover. He just kind of, I don't know, he he's kind of just looks like a horse. Um, this horse should be two to five in here. Um, you know, I, I went with Xander in this race. Um, he kind of, he broke slow last time. And uh, Maldonado just let him gather his feet. He actually made a you know eye-catching move going into the far turn, started the far turn, and he went five wide and he wrapped up on him. He didn't really have anything left in the in the lane, but they throw the blinkers on on this horse. And I watched his last work. He looked looked in hand, looked sharp. Um, I think that he's going to pressure pressure the Baffert horse, and uh, the Baffert horse hasn't showed me that he can close well. So if he's right on his hip. I I. I like the sources 12 to 1. Dylan Donnelly firing right out of the gate. 12 to 1, as he mentioned, on number three, Xander, his top pick in race number two. And by the way, Dylan, a bad running line sometimes can be your best friend, right? That was on turf. As you mentioned, he missed the break. A lot of players are just going to look at that and automatically discount the horse. You're not taking it at face value. No, you got to, I mean, there's a story in every race, and you got to see how the, the, you know, the story was told. And, um, you know, wasn't the best beginning of the story and it, the story got better in the middle and then it you know he faltered so there's a 
This horse is going to improve today. Race number three is one I'm sure you'll be watching with interest. That's because it's a $32,000 claimer. Non-winners of two races, lifetime traveling one mile on the turf course. We've got a good field of nine. The Maury Line favorite, number five, Flintstroll from the Doug O'Neill Barn. Five to two on the Maury Line. Flintstroll and Arrest, the horse you own, number three. Both come out of the same race. Before we get your thoughts on the race, Dylan, let's listen to Frank Miramati describe the action from the fifth race back on January 8th that both you and and in race one, oncoming as well as Flynn Stroll, all competed in you break from post position number one. And they're off. they're off. Flynn Stroll and George Herman Ruth in the center out alertly. On the far outside, here's never seen before part of the pace and a rest down at the rail. So it's a rest just in front. Oculus joins the party. Never seen before. Makes it three across the course. Algeria settles in a good spot. Fourth, four lengths off the leader. Then it's George Herman Ruth. Racing on the inside of Flint Stroll. A gap of six to oncoming. Inside Barola Jane. And another three to Hoodlum. Around the clubhouse turn. And it's Kent DeSormo in a rest. Carving out the fractions a length and a half. Oculus second now. Three in front of never seen before third. Then Algeria, Flint Stroll on the outside. George Herman Ruth is the gray. Three quarters to oncoming, who's about four in front of Barola Jean and Hoodlum. They take a little bit closer order as they come to the half mile pole. Arrest's lead is just under a length to Oculus. It's still another four lengths back to the next flight, headed by never seen before down at the rail. Algeria between them and Flint Stroll outside of that pair. Oncoming, red cap, five lengths off the leader. And inside of him, George Herman Ruth. It's done another couple of lengths. Hoodlum is out of last. Barola Jean inside of him. Arrest takes them with a quarter of a mile to go. A one length advantage. Shuffling right out is Oculus. He'll be last momentarily. In the meantime, Flint Stroll comes to challenge Arrest. Arrest, Flint Stroll, oncoming, is closing stoutly in the center of the course. And here he comes. On coming on the outside, Flint Stroll in between and a rest down at the rail. Flint Stroll on coming, on coming on the outside, on coming. Oh, he looked like he won it by a nose. But Dylan, I love when the connections have a plan, and it certainly looks like you had a plan. You claimed to rest for $16,000, and what did you and trainer Mike Pipey do? You immediately stretched him out to two turns on the turf course. Now, the replay we just watched was a mile and an eighth on the turf. Today's distance is a mile. One would suspect that a rest could improve at the shorter distance. Are you expecting improvement today? Yeah, I, I really like him today. Um, even Of if course he, you do. I mean, yeah, even but even if I wasn't, if I didn't own the horse, I would be making uh, I'd be making a bet on this horse. Um, what do you like so much about him? You know, he, he's cutting back. He's got all that air in his lungs. Flintstroll, I don't think, I don't see how Flintstroll beats us today. You want to um, do a head-to-head -head with trainer Doug O'Neill, huh? Head-to-head -head wager? Yes, let's do it okay. twice. Um, <laughs> You know, he really only passed us like at the 16th pole. Um, Flint Stroll is way better in a mile and an eighth. He's just kind of a grinder. We're back to a mile today. Um, we're going to have position on Flint Stroll. I don't think we're going to be on the lead. I think the six and the seven are going to go. Um, I'm hoping that we get in front of Juan on the one, and we're going to sit on the rail. And a rest, when, when, when Kent pushes the button, he can go. So I just hope we get the jump on everybody. And um, we didn't get tired last time either. They just came and got us. And um, I think he's he's set up pretty pretty well for today. And four to one on the morning line, which I'm sure is music to your ears. Obviously, you can see Dylan Donnelly, the owner of Arrest, loves his runner today. Let's take a look at our feature race on today today's card, Dylan. It's the Tisnow Stakes, hundred thousand dollars guaranteed for Calabres, traveling one mile on the main track. One scratch, scratch the two. Phineas leaves us with a field of four. Heavy morning line favorite, who was impressive last time out sprinting is on the bottom, number five, the Chosen Vron from the Eric Krul Jack Barn. Two to five on the Moy line, another, vul another vulnerable favorite here? I do. Uh, I think the Chosen Vron is vulnerable. Uh, his it, his best numbers, like his ones that pop out to you, uh, they were in a four-horse field sprinting at Del Mar where he was just up on a very slow pace, and he went nicely. That's cool. But Koalinga Road was in there also, and Koalinga Road was coming towards the end of the race. And, um, you know, the Chosen Vron's other – Fast race was uh, Los Alamitos' first big, big city light. So, you know, when you come down, he's going to be chasing Leia's Candy today. And Leia's Candy, if you watched that last race, I don't see how you're comfortable betting against him. 
He was sharp his second start going going around the ground, earned good numbers. He made a big backside move, also had a yeah. great gallop out as well. He's a sharp, improving Cal bred. Yeah, him, Koalinga Road, and the Chosen Vron, they're all kind of running the same numbers. Um, I think two to two to five is a huge underlay on uh, the Chosen Vron. And uh, I put, took Koalinga Road on top. I think he's going to probably run about 20 feet less um, than um, the Chosen Vron. And I don't think, uh, you know, you're gonna you can give up 20 feet to the source and it looks like you're actually even trying to keep the chosen run out of the exact it sounds like you might be involved in the exact pool in race four as well yeah i mean i just think there's so much value in in tossing the source um he can win sure um but i just i don't need him <laughs> race number five begins the 20 cent rainbow pick six the jackpot single ticket carry over now up to one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars. that'll be yours Plus, whatever is wagered today, if you're the only winning ticket in today's 20-cent rainbow pick six, we kick things off spreading six and a half furlongs on the turf course. For maiden special weights, ages four and five years old, there are three first-time gellings. Number one, classically. Number four, quality wins. And number nine, Blue Dog are all first-time gellings. Maury line favorite, number three, Admiral Halsey off the layoff for trainer Peter Miller. Three to one with Johnny V in the uh, saddle. This is where things get interesting, uh, Dylan. I really like the back half of this card. This is an example of a wide-open race to me. Yeah, this is this is kind of a grab bag here. Um, I don't like the price on the two, but I just think he's going to be the fastest early. And some of his races, some jockeys were riding this horse and they just grabbed out of the gate and tried to sit and make a run. Uh, that was not that was not smart. This horse has got he's very quick out of the gate, and I don't think there's going to be anywhere close to him. Uh, I think this horse can be two lengths clear if Johnny asked this horse. Um, you know. There's these other horses, you know, the three is going to get bet. He's turning back in distance, and uh, I think he's going to be pretty far off the pace. My other horse I like was Dancing Rinka. Another one, Joe Bravo completely grabbed this horse right out of the gate last time, made a move around the far turn, um, and basically in all of his route races, he's just uncovered on both turns, and that's such a huge disadvantage. It's You have to get cover in grass races, especially going two turns. So um, he's working well. I'm hoping JJ, you know, asks this horse a little bit and is not too far back. And um, this horse always trains well. He just kind of just doesn't get it done. So hopefully the cutback will help him. Two and seven to kick off uh, things in race number five in the 20 cent rainbow pick six. Let's take a look at race number six, which begins the 50 cent late pick five. We're sprinting six and a half furlongs in the main track for Calbred. Allowance optional claiming types, non winners of one other than a field of seven. Number four, Jack Six Pack going from a turf uh, sprint to a dirt sprint is the. Five to two morning line favorite. I don't know. I thought Jack Six Pack was one of the vulnerable one of the vulnerable favorites on today's card. What say you, Dylan? To be honest, I don't have a strong opinion in here at all. I, I this, they all look the same to me. Um, I don't know. I uh, I went with uh, Jack Six Pack on top just because he was a he looked nice last time uh, winning. I don't think there's a lot of you know the one's going to go, but I think it's kind of just them two that are going to be out there. And, um, you know, I don't, you could really talk me into anybody in this race. I'm not betting this race. I'm not going to, I'm not investing anything in here. So I'm just going to sit back and be a fan in this one. Dylan, uh, Dylan Donnelly going to go grab a hot dog and basically show his discipline, which allows him to pass a, a particular races that he doesn't necessarily have a strong opinion. And that's a wise move that I would, uh, that I would uh, consider or recommend to many of you to do as well. You can't beat every race, that's for sure. Race number seven begins the 50-cent late pick four. Sprinting six furlongs on the flat turf course. Phillies and mares, maiden claimers, four and five years of age. $50,000 is the claiming tag. A good field of 11 here. Number eight, classy from the Mike Pipey barn. Is three to one on the morning line. Mike Pipey's your trainer. Did he whisper anything in your ear about number eight, classy, in race number seven? <laughs> uh, he likes the source. Uh, they, you know, they didn't write the other race, and that was at a mile and an eighth. Um, no one really entered that, so that's why they're in this spot. Uh, I don't think this horse is going to be on the lead. Pratt's going to take a hold and try to make a run. But I, I this is a wide open race. I went with two prices in here. I went with uh, strikingly, uh, Marcelo Polanco and Hector Berrios. I watched his works. The horse looks well. He's training well. Um, and this horse always makes a move in in his races. Um, he's dropping in class. Some of his uh, numbers are very competitive with the rest of these horses. Some of the lower priced horses in here. Um, I don't see why he can't win. And Brian Corner, he's dropping this horse off a of, you know year plus layoff. This horse has got speed on the outside. Um, they all kind of look alike in here, so I'm not. 
uh, there's no way I'm taking a horse at three to five, four to one, five to one, three to one in here. I'm going to take some prices in here. Bombs away, 15 to one over 10 to one in race number seven. So says our seminar guest, Dylan Donnelly. Dylan, a few times during the seminar so far, you've mentioned watch, watching workouts, which you can do absolutely free of charge, courtesy of our friends at XBTV.com. What specifically do you look for when you mention that horses are working well when you're watching workout tape? Are you watching the movement of the exercise riders, the horse's action? Like what makes you determine whether a workout is good or not? Yeah, pretty much just the, you know, the, the jockey's hands, um, if he's asking them or not. Um, that that's kind of big and just if they're if they're smooth I mean, i'm not the best i don't i don't know a ton when i'm watching them but i mean i have been watching races for a long time so you kind of know when a good a traveler when it you know when they look like it so um just just going through the motions i don't care if it's you know 47 for four furlongs or if it's 49 you know 50 if they're just if they're cruising and the jockey's not asking them that's you know they're doing well Reminds me what the, the uh, late, great Charlie Whittingham once said regarding uh, times for workouts. He said, <clears throat> excuse me, time only workouts when you're mad. When, oh, time only matters when you're in jail. Race number eight begins this, uh, is for Phillies and Mares. Seven furlongs on the main track. Allowance optional claiming touch. Non-winners of one other than. A field of six. Number three, Princess Adelaide, who's going to be a single on many players' tickets, is the six to five Moyen line favorite. Is that a wise move to single Princess Adelaide in race number eight, uh, Dylan? Yeah, if you're going to single somebody, I have no problem singling um, this this speed horse. He's going should be should be a few lengths up on the on the rest of them. Uh, he ran really well against a good Philly American Lily last time. Uh, dug in. I think this is the most likely winner on the card. Beset well, second to arrest, but um, you know I think uh, Juan Hernandez is going to ask the two to stay within range, and I, I thought I think it's just those two. If you're going to play an exacta, I would just do. 3-2 straight in that race. Ice cold like Dave Weaver likes yeah. to say, right? Yeah, exactly. What about playing favorites in the multi-race exotics? Of course, you're singling and hoping that they win, but at the same time, if they do, the whole crowd's coming along with you, depressing the price. When you see a heavy favorite like this in your multi-race exotics, from a live betting standpoint, would you tend to not make the wager? Would you tend to press the wager? Like, What impact does a short price favorite have on your wagering strategy? Um, so for well, for different bets, like in the so for pick fives, like I don't have a problem singling this one because say like uh, the chosen run i bet you 95 for 90 per, i don't know they're going to be singling that one a lot more um i don't think they'll be singling as much with this one um it just it all depends on you know it, it's so difficult you know, it's just kinda, yeah it's circumstances and feel feel based type of things so this one, I don't have a problem with singling. Race number nine begins the $1 Golden Hour Pick 4 sequence. Our friends up north at Golden Gate are racing today, so the $1 Golden Hour Pick 4 links our last two races here with the last two races at Golden Gate. And we kick things off in race number nine here, coming down the hillside turf course for Phillies and Mares. Allowance optional claiming types, non-winners of two other than. We've got a field of nine, number four, Phenom, who's exiting a common race that many of these exit, is the 3-1 to Moyne line favorite. We weren't able to access the replay, Dylan, so we can't show the replay, but we, but we do have a lot to go on here simply because so many so many of these runners come out of the same race as i mentioned uh not only does a phenom come out of that race that stella noir won last time out but so does secrets told and i have a feeling you do like secrets told today i do um you know a lot in that last race i was against phenom i don't think the horse is a good finisher i don't think he's you know he was just so he was just so much in front when he was winning his other races beforehand secrets told if this horse runs second uh, last time uh it would have been a very very good day <laughs> for me uh i played stella noir over secret sold straight um but kyle frey i think he got i don't know what he was doing but he he asked the horse pretty early to to go catch the the very fast horse in front of him and i think if he just waited he could have i don't know if he would have won but he definitely would have ran second all the horses that were up near the pace in there folded i thought secrets told ran a hell of a race um you know, this is second start off the layoff, should be a little bit fitter, working well again. Um, I think he's going to track the, the other D'Amato horse and, um, you know, run that one down. And the other horse I thought was Tom's Beauty. Um, got a good ride last time, and that's what this horse needed um, from his previous races. And uh, this horse is sharp. Coming back kind of early, kind of quick, you know, at 16 days. Um, you know, I'm not a trainer. I don't know. This horse is probably doing well. So I'll just roll him right back in this race. And uh, I was 
five eight. Secrets told did come down the hillside turf uh, turf course last time. Tom's beauty did not. Is that any concern backing Tom's beauty? The fact she's never been down the hill. No, because I don't know that she can't do it. So. <laughs> You know, who knows? <laughs> Fair enough. Just uh, let the dice fly and let them fall yeah. where they may, right? Yeah. We close out the day and we close out the week in race number 10, sprinting five and a half furlongs in the main track for Phillies and Mares. $20,000 is the claiming tag. Non-winners of three races. Lifetime is the condition. Also, race 10 begins the $5 golden, golden hour daily double, linking our last race here with the last race at Gold again. An important scratch in the last race, the original morning line favorite number one, Double Fantasy, declared out of the race. There's also a program scratch of number five, Blushing. The revised morning line favorite is now number six. Head start from the Jeff Mullins barn. Five to two on the morning line. We've got a field of nine here, Dylan. We need a winner to close out the week. Who's it going to be and why? All right. Well, let's go out with the price here. I like uh, it. We got two of them. Well, I don't know what the revised morning lines are on the horse, but I'm going to go with uh, Soul Sweet. This horse is dropping in class from uh, open $20,000 claimers. He's got speed, and that's always good. Uh, this horse is 15 to 1 on the morning line. Um, so inside pace is always good. And uh, Bonita what is it, Leona. Horse ran well last time. Uh, was kind of up close to a pretty quick pace. And um, I think we'll get a little bit more patient ride with Tiago aboard. I uh, hope it's not too patient because they're only going five and a half. But, um, yeah, I, these are kind of all the same. They're all running kind of the same numbers. Um, La Vie kind of vet scratch recently. Um, you know, head start. Sure, th this horse can win, but they don't – None of these horses are completely better than one of, than the other ones, and if they run this race ten times, there's going to be a bunch of different winners. So, Dylan Donnelly always shopping for a price, and he's certainly coming with prices in the nightcap two and nine to close it out. A question for you, Dylan: We saw you took a rest for sixteen thousand dollars. Now you got him up to thirty-two thousand. This looks to be like a claiming race. I'm not saying that you're going to dip in and drop a claim, but when you kind of analyze the racing form and potentially drop a claim slip on a runner, what are some things you're looking at in order to make that final decision? Uh, if they got spots that you can run in, uh, different conditions. I, I when I'm looking, I'm mostly looking for maidens or horses that have only raised uh, one one race. Or ship and win. Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, I want to. I'm going to start looking at Gulfstream or you know some other tracks, but just horses that are what they're doing at that time is not it. And I think they're uh, my track record is seeming horses that uh, that are running on dirt that I think can run on the grass. Um, so, cause their forms usually dirtied up and, um, got to check, got to change it up. If you're not handicapping six days a week, you're getting outworked by my seminar guest, Dylan Donnelly. He's got the results to show for it as well. It shows that you can beat the races. Dylan, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Obviously continued success at all the upcoming tournaments. There's a lot of lucrative and major tournaments coming up. I'll look for your name at the top of the leaderboard. And I know you won't disappoint me. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks to all of you for watching as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Next voice you hear will be track announcer Frank Miramati updating us with any late program changes. One important announcement to make before we go, in case you haven't heard, no live racing on Friday. Friday's racing has been canceled due to heavy rain incoming into the area that is forecasted for the next few days. The weather is certainly going to take a turn for the worse. So we're being cautious and canceling racing for Friday. So next live racing day here at the Great Race Place will be on Saturday. But first things first, let's enjoy today's beautiful President's Day's 10 race card. Have fun, everybody, and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen,
please rise for our national anthem. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special President's Day card here at Santa Anita Park. The track is fast and the turf course is firm with the rail on the turf at zero feet. Here are the changes. The early pick five begins with race one. There are no changes. We have a blinker note in race number two. Blinker note in race three. The fourth is the Tis Now Stakes. Scratch number two, Phineas. And with that scratch, there's no show wagering. The Rainbow Pick Six starts with the fifth. The jackpot today, $164,000. No changes in race five. Turning to the sixth race, no changes. In the seventh race, no changes. Blinker note in today's eighth event. The ninth begins the golden hour pick four. No changes. And in the tenth, in addition to the program scratch at number five, scratch number one, double fantasy. The golden hour double begins with our tenth. And there is a revised morning line. Enjoy your day at Santa Anita Park. Specials today.
Dollar beers, dollar sodas, and $2 hot dogs. 25 minutes to post for the opener. 